and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. I'd like to ask Reverend Dina Karen for the opening prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for this wonderful moment. Thank you all for this worship day, Lord, to grant it in our life. As we gather here to worship you, O Father, from the beginning to the end of the service, let the presence of God be with us, help us to see the manifestation among us, O Father God. Whatever the songs we sing, whatever the word of God, what we are hearing, get us to, Lord, keep in our heart and mind and fix our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ and walk on the Christ-centered way. Be with us, guide us and lead us in Jesus Christ's wonderful name we do pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dinakaram. Now is the time for congregational song. For the congregational song, let us turn to page number 300, Nan Umay Patri Ratchaga.
Elizabeth Priscilla for the responsive reading. The chosen part from the Holy Bible for the responsive reading is taken from Psalm number 146. Hallelujah! My soul praise the Lord. I will praise, I will the, Lord praise the Lord as long as I, I live. I will sing praises to my God, God while I have been in my being. Do not trust in nobles, in man who cannot save. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth, and the weary day his plants flourish. Happy is the one whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Who may heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executing justice for the exploited and giving food to the hunger, the Lord frees prisoners. Lord, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord protects foreigners and helps the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. Let us all read the last verse together. The Lord will reign forever, the God of Israel, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let us all read the Apostles' Greed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Let us all examine ourselves and say the confession prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from the ways led to worship. We have followed too much the desires and the desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left them those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which ought not to have done. And there is no help in us, but thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Miserable offenders, spare thou them, O God. Confess their faults, restore thou them that are patient. According to the promise, declare unto making in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant to most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses as we forgive the trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, the gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful time that have enabled us to be here. O oh Lord, bless each and every one of us with good consciousness, O oh Lord, and let the Holy Spirit be with us. O oh Lord, and, and we do rebuke all kind of evil spirits that is working among us this time, O oh Lord. We rebuke them in your mighty name and help us so that we may be able to glorify your name and surrender to your word, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, let the word of God touch our hearts and let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. For the congregational song, let us turn the pages to 302. Mari da dorni se mit par. Oh uh -huh. 
us sing the song number 303, Ayiram Ayiram Padal Kalai. Chosen part for the second Bible reading is taken from the Holy Bible, Romans chapter 1. 
verses from 1 to 7. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son who was to his earthly life was a descendant of David and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we received grace and apostleship to all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his holy people. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Reverend Sujata, for the second Bible reading. Now is the time for worship choruses. Let us sing the song number 304. Our GV Padal Nan GV Kinrei.
today's short meditation will be looking what God has given to us. For us, Mary, human being, what He has given to us, and in return, what we have given to Him, or what we are going to give to Him. Okay? So let us turn to Exodus chapter 20, verses 11. I would like somebody to read it. For the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them in six days, then he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and declared it holy. In Psalms 19 verse 1 it says, The heavens are telling the glory of God. They are a marvelous display of his craftsmanship. And read Psalms 33 verses 6, 7 and 9. The heavens were made by the word of the Lord and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into a heap. He puts the depths into storehouses. For he spoke and it came into being. He commanded and it came into existence. Here we see the creation, what God has created and just by his command. And let's see in Isaiah chapter 40 verses 15. Look, the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are considered as a speck of dust in the scales. He lifts up the islands like fine dust. And verse 12 also. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or marked off the heavens with the span of his hand? Who has gathered the dust of the earth in a measure, or weighed the mountains in a balance, and the hills in the scales? Here we see the comparison of the creation and us in Isaiah. And let us read Hebrews chapter 11 verses 3. By faith we understand that the universe was created by God's command, so that what is seen has been made from things that are not visible. And finally let us read Psalms 8 verses 3 to 4. When I observe your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is man that you remember him, the son of man that you look after him? Here we see how wonder is God's creation. And beyond our understanding that we could understand in this creation, we see that he gives more importance to us, to you and me. And I would like to read from the devotion that I was going through in a book where it says, and where, where we can see, like we can take a look at the world which God gave to man. Tall, endless, smooth, finished, multicolored roof without pillars, and we call them sky. Water like wandering wild water jugs, we call clouds. Having flood lights, like the sun, the moon, the stars, and the hanging flood lights, the sun and the moon. And scattered night bulbs, we call them stars. Flying wonders that display their aerobatics, the birds and the paddle-fitted living submarines that neither needs a sailor nor gets drowned. Do you know what I said? Fishes. And hopping, hanging, jumping, jiggling, preaching, perching, innumerable creatures with their one unique behaviors. And we call them animals. And these are the things, so many creatures that God has created for us. And you see that the hair we breathe, the hills we wander at, the greenery that cools, the flowers that bloom, the food that grows, the water that cascades, look at all that God created in less than a week. Yet the innumerable wonders made in such a short span are nevertheless the best. Because God always wanted man to have the best from him and he gave it. But if we are given an opportunity to give him something, what will you give? I would like to say, to examine ourselves, like God has given us so many wonderful things and let us examine in ourselves and let us ponder what we can give God in return. When we give someone a gift, it is a tendency that they give gift us back. Like if we are giving for a person's birthday a gift and that person will remember us in our birthday and they'll try to return the favor. Like that is a common human tendency. And when we see the wonders of what God has given us, let us try to examine ourselves and 
think of something what we can give to him. But sorry to say for ourselves that we have given him nothing. When I think of what I give to God, it's like it's not most of thing that we can think so much wondrous thing that as God has made, but from our ability, what we can do our best to return to God to give him something and when we think it's like more worst right when when i think of myself sometimes i give i only give him all my troubles and my situations and trying to correct them but considering what man can give to god for the best gift ever is our worship to him and out of all this creation and out of all these marvelous things which is beyond our understanding what is the most precious thing God has given to us? It is His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. It was His Son that He gave us. It was so difficult for to see how a father giving his son for the sins that we have made and where the world has falsely accused him and persecuted him and crucified him. And here we see how God judges what we give. God does not judge us of what we give to Him, but what we keep like what we give to him like is to show our love towards him what can i give to him is to show my love to him is to give him our whole hearted when a guest comes we don't give something leftover or something that is rotting we don't give the leftovers to our guest when someone specially comes we go out and buy something and give them and yet when we treat our guest with such thing like we don't give something leftovers or something that is rotten or something that is spoiling or we don't present it to our guests but rather we present them with something very pleasing and something very good but yet we fail to serve the Lord with what he deserves the very best sometimes we don't treat our Lord the same sometimes we have to realize that we have to give our best to present him that which, which is pleasing to him and instead we give him the leftover time we do all our work in this wicked world like not because well in sense we get caught up so much that we don't have enough time for God and more than giving our best and more than giving the first priority to God we always backslide and give the remaining what is remained out of all our strength we give to him and that should really be modified and we need to give what is best for our God when we are young and all our childhood all our youth all our youthfulness and everything is being spent according to this world we give time more to this worldly time like spending time with our friends or with the internet and just consumes our times then before even we realize it so what is remaining all our childhood our youthfulness we have the more strength in our body is being wasted by this world and when we are getting very old like when many people are retired that time they are committed to the Lord like when most of their health and strength is deteriorating that time they give the time to him when the time is full of our energy and all of our strength we give it to the world and we tend to spend it on the world rather than spending on God in our when we see the most people who are working after they retire since they don't have work they give themselves to him so it is more important for us right now to realize how much strength is left for us and how much can we do our best to please our god and how much he can give to god who has given us his only son and all the things that we are enjoying in this world all the creations all the blessings even in a city so busy in a metropolitan city like this when we go out all we can see is only pollution and the sound noises all this car horn and all this music that produced by these vehicles but when you look up the sky and all those evening sunrise and sunset just by going by walk even in a whole road where there are no trees when you see a small bush it brings so joy to me but I do believe when, when we see outside, when we see some colors in the skies and these clouds sometimes, it's so pleasing. And we are here living our lives, being able to see them and enjoy them, where most of them they couldn't. And in return, what we are doing to God, 
Like, are we being at least thankful? Rather, we are just giving all our leftovers, all our remaining time, all our time that is not worth, not worth for this world. But rather, we make use of all our time in this world and then later realize how important it is. So rather than realizing it later, let us realize it beforehand and praise God for all his good work and for everything that he has given given to us. And let us try to, in the coming days, to give him our first priority to him. And there is a say, and there is a quote from Peter Marshall. He says, give according to your income lest God make your income according to your giving. When we try to give to God with our wholeheartedly, with all that we have, He will make it according to what we give. And when we give the remaining, we don't see any flourishment in ourselves. But when we give all we could, there will be enough flourishment in our lives. And there is C.S. Lewis who said, I do not believe one can settle how much we have to give. I am afraid the only safe rule is to give more than we can spare. He, here he says, give more than you can. Can you just even imagine when I imagine that it's so difficult for me. Even if when I'm having something, even to give few portion or give even something, it is so hard because it is full covered with our desire and our love to what we have. But when we try to give, more than what we have sometimes we don't have anything but we have the heart to give something but we will be totally broken side we but we won't go unanswered god sees our heart and god sees of what we keep not we give not not what we give to him it's what we keep and and when we give with our wholeheartedly and with everything that we have surely god will bless and he'll be pleased and from in the coming days, let us try our best to make God our first priority and let us not give Him the leftover time, the leftover things, but rather let us give Him the first priority and the first time and let us give more than what we could give. Let that be our to-do list or let it be in our goal this week and in the coming days. Amen. Let us sing the song number 305, Nan Sugamani.
Closing prayer and benediction. Our gracious Father, we present thank you for this wonderful hour in the moment. Thank you, Lord, for this day this hour. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed worship day about to grant it in our life, oh, Father. As you bless our service from beginning to the end, let your presence, Lord, continue to bless us and continue to be with us, stay with us as long as we come back again, O oh, Father. From my day one to day lost, eh? Lord, each and every day, every hour, every second, every moment, let the presence of God follow us, guide us, and lead us, and help us to stay in your house, O oh, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for the songs of what we sang, the words what we heard. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God, what you provided through your servant, Reverend Rachel Susan, as we heard. Help us, O oh, Father God, to abide by thy word and walk accordingly, O oh, Father. Dedicate ourselves. And realize who we are, what we are, and what we have to do for thy glory in the days to come, O oh, Father God. As we submit our body, soul, and spirit into the mighty hand, Lord God bless us once again. And help us stay blessed in the name of Jesus Christ, our King of glory, O oh, Father. Be with us, guide us, and lead us. 
In Jesus Christ's wonderful name we do pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord of my soul. All praise the Lord of soul. And forget not all his benefits. Amen.